say, against uh, Robert Mugabe is concerns about things like health care. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that the issues that you highlight um, speak very much to the concerns of so many Zimbabweans that for a very long time it looked as if uh, Zimbabwe's transition from colonial rule, rule offered a much brighter and better future for the majority of the population. Since the 1990s, as you've pointed out, there has been a gradual decline that then proceeded apace in the 2000s, leaving many, many people uh, destitute, desperate for food food, access to water and good efficient health services. In, in fact, the, the government of Robert Mugabe denied that these things were even taking place. The cholera outbreak, for example. So the cholera outbreak, which began in August uh, 2008, followed Zimbabwe's highly contentious and extremely violent um, elections in March and uh, June of that year. Um, at this time, um, the ZANU-PF government and Robert Mugabe himself had lost substantial um, social and political legitimacy, were facing pressure both internationally and regionally for a change of power, and were facing a, a host of accusations around rig the rigging of elections. Of course, during this period, uh, the Zimbabwean economy had collapsed. Uh, there was tremendous hyperinflation uh, throughout the country. People were using uh, notes within the denominations of the billion and trillions. Now, the cholera outbreak was, if you like, uh, another uh, crisis uh, on, uh, on top of a catalogue of many extant problems uh, and signalled the profound collapse uh, in public health infrastructure. Uh, after three months into the outbreak, uh, the Zimbabwean government uh, declared the through the Ministry of Health that there was indeed a public health emergency uh, facing the country and made appeals to the international community for assistance. Uh, however, only a week uh, later, uh, the Minister Inf of Information uh, at the time, Sikanyi Sondlovu, and President Mugabe uh, not only denied the cholera outbreak, uh, but claimed that cholera was a biological attack uh, from uh, Britain and former imperial powers uh, to undermine Zimbabwean sovereignty. Uh, so as you can see, a public health issue became very much a part of uh, a contestation over political legitimacy. And similarly, I mean, HIV AIDS, I remember traveling uh, to Zimbabwe a few years ago and meeting children as young as three or four who had the infection. This is correct. Um, the HIV AIDS story is again another complex one. I think throughout the 1990, uh, throughout the 1980s, sorry, um, when the disease began to, to appear, um, it was the disease that could not be named. It was faced with tremendous uh, social stigma associated with commercial sex work and so forth. Um, there were many doctors, many activists, and many people within Zimbabwe's Ministry of Health that were working diligently and conscientiously um, to draw wider attention uh, to the gravity of the AIDS crisis yet full political will um, to acknowledge its true depth and extent uh, was limited. Um, I think that the AIDS crisis itself became tied to notions of, of shame and began to question the deteriorating standards within the health system and its failure to provide not only for the curative aspects uh, but also the preventative aspects of health care. Well, now we're seeing uh, potentially the imminent uh, removal of Robert Mugabe, something completely unthinkable even a week ago. Simukai, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. That was Simukai Chigudu joining us there from Oxford. Now, the Myanmar government has rejected all allegations of ethnic cleansing against its Rohingya Muslim population. The BBC's Nitin Srivastava is one of the few international journalists who has entered Rakhine State. He's met with internally displaced Hindus who say uh, they're caught between the state and the militants. He's also in